Hello and welcome back to Pale Blue Thoughts. Here I am returning after a COVID induced break. Thanks to all those who send me get well soon messages. Thanks to vaccines, I survived the ordeal with moderate symptoms. Today's video is a little special as this is one subject that no YouTuber has made a video on. So please share this video so that this information reaches others too. Also, there is an interesting announcement that I would like to make at the end of this video. So please make sure you watch till the end. So let's get right into today's interesting video. We don't really know when humans actually invented the concept of God. However, what we do know is that almost all human cultures have had a God concept in one form or the other. Buddhism and Jainism is slightly off that track here, but they still have religious beliefs and belief in supernatural figures. For many, God is an entity to blame when things go wrong and for taking the credit when things go right. It is a proven fact that babies, when they are babies, that is, do not understand the concept of God. So we are all born atheists. Then religion gets indoctrinated into our brains as we grow up and we are forced to believe. But what if I told you that there still lives a group of people who do not have a concept of God? In fact, they don't even have a concept of time and many other things that we humans consider as part and parcel of our lives. Colors, numbers, art are all unknown entities for them. Welcome to the fascinating world of the Pidaha tribe. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and denounces pseudoscience. The Pidaha are an indigenous people who live along the banks of the Macy River which is a tributary of Amazon in the deep rainforest of Brazil. They still live the life of hunter-gatherers just like how our great great ancestors did tens of thousands of years ago. They are a tribe of around 800 odd people who live a contented and happy life amongst the thick rainforests of the Amazon. According to the best guess of archaeologists, the Pidaha arrived in the Amazon between 10,000 and 40,000 years ago after bands of Homo sapiens from Eurasia migrated to the Americas. The Pidaha descended from a larger indigenous group called the Mura but split from the main tribe way back in the 1700s. The Mura learned Portuguese and their language is now extinct but the Pidaha retreated into the jungle and still appear relatively uninterested in adopting outside cultures. Although the world knew about the existence of Pidaha since early 1920s, it wasn't until the visit of Daniel Everett, an American linguist, that the world would start to take notice of this tribe. Daniel was sent on a special dubious mission to the Pidahas as a missionary to teach them about the Bible and to translate the Bible into their language. Daniel and his young family were dispatched because two other missionaries had spent two decades struggling to pick up the language and failing to convert any Pidahas. Daniel's first visit ended when his wife and daughter nearly died from malaria but he persevered spending all of 1980 with the Pidaha and returning to live with them for four months or so every year for the next two decades. Despite close encounters with snakes and Brazilian traders who incited the Pidaha to kill Daniel, the missionary come linguist befriended the Pidaha and painstakingly picked up their extraordinary language. Although he was received well by the tribe, there was more in store for Daniel that would change his life forever. He soon found out that the Piraha tribe had no concept of God and no creation myths or afterlife concepts. However, they do believe in spirits that can sometimes take on the shape of things in the environment. These spirits can be jaguars, trees or other visible, tangible things including people. So when Daniel took the Bible to them and told them about Jesus, they wanted to know if Daniel had seen Jesus. He replied no. Then they asked him if his dad had seen Jesus to which he again had to reply with a no. Then they asked, well, who saw him? And Daniel said, well, they're all dead. It was a long time ago. And the reply from Piraha was, so why are you telling us about this guy if you never saw him and you don't know anyone who ever saw him? That was the Piraha method of seeing the world. 
they require evidence for every claim that are made to them missionaries and apologetics who try to convert people from one religion use a technique that was made famous by david livingston who went to africa as a missionary livingston had said that the first step of missions is to destroy the local culture destroyed through capitalism because as you create a desire for western goods they will realize how worthless they are and they will listen to the missionary about their god you've got to get them lost before you can get them saved is the age old adage that even apologetics today adopt but as daniel started to work with the pidaha he started questioning his mission what is the message that he is supposed to be giving to these people that they are lost they are not going to feel lost they are as happy and contented as anyone else in this world and in a curious twist of the tale the person who tried to convert them got converted instead and daniel who was a fervent believer ended up being an atheist as he started to vehemently question his own beliefs as he tried to convert the godless tribe unlike other cultures in the world the pidahas have no creation myths explaining existence when asked they simply reply everything is the same things always are the mothers also don't tell their children fairy tales actually nobody tells any kind of stories they don't look at history beyond what they have experienced themselves in their lives whatever is an important in the present is quickly forgotten by the pidaha one of the strongest pidaha values is no compulsions you simply don't tell other people what to do even children there appears to be no social hierarchy the pidaha have no formal leaders typical free thinkers lifestyle no one paints and there is no art is another feature that distinguishes this tribe from other nomadic tribes of yester years the concept of drawing is alien to them and when asked to draw a person animal tree or river the results are simple lines pidaha people build simple huts where they keep a few pots pans knives and machetes they only make scraping tools mainly for making arrowheads loosely woven palm leaf bags bows and arrows they rely on neighboring communities to build canoes for them and trade brazil nuts for consumables or tools example gunpowder powdered milk sugar and well whiskey one adoption of western living that they have taken on is clothing t-shirts and shorts for men and home sewn cotton dresses for women they take naps of 15 minutes to at the most 2 hours throughout the day and night and they rarely sleep throughout the night they do not store food in any quantity but generally eat it when they get it the next thing that intrigued daniel was their language the language of the pidaha was based on just eight consonants and three vowels yet it possesses such a complex array of tones stresses and syllable lengths that its speakers can do without their vowels and consonants altogether and sing hum or whistle conversations that which comes out of the head is a term by which piraha refer to their language crooked head is the tribe term for any language that is not piraha and they consider all other languages derogatory and inferior to theirs but of all the curiosities the one that bugs linguists the most is that piraha is likely the only language in the world that doesn't use subordinate clauses instead of saying when i have finished eating i would like to speak to you the pirahas would say i finish eating i speak with you their language does not have past and future tenses because they don't believe in the past or care about the future they are content with the present in recent years the pirah gained much academic and public interest after the publication of daniel everett's book don't sleep there are snakes Daniel his wife and family lived with the Pilaha for almost 30 years and it was Daniel who was the first who grasped their grammar one of Daniel's claims is that the Pilaha language defies classical theories of grammar as had been championed by the eminent linguist Noam Chomsky at the time Chomsky was revered as the father of modern linguistics for his theory of universal grammar Chomsky's idea was that humans are innately programmed by evolution to produce language according to a fixed and finite set of rules built into our genomes. In 2005, Daniel Everett published a paper about the Pidaha that rocked the foundation of universal grammar. Chomsky had recently refined his theory to argue that recursion, the linguistic practice of inserting phrases inside others, was the cornerstone of all languages. An example of recursion is extending of sentences like this is the dog that chased the cat. Everett argued that he could not find 
any evidence of recursion in Pidaha. In Pidaha, the sentence would read, This is a dog. It chased a cat. This lack of recursion was deeply troubling for Chomsky's theory. If the Pidaha didn't use recursion, then how could it be a fundamental part of a universal grammar embedded in our genes? And if the Pidaha didn't use recursion, then is their language and by implication other languages determined not by biology but by our culture? The ensuring debate over the origins of cultural linguistics and theories of universal grammar are ongoing and heated with the Pidaha unknowingly at the center. Another thing that Pidahas lack are numbers. They don't have words for numbers and they don't count things. A woman wouldn't know how many children she has. There is one word, hoi, which does come close to the numeral one. But it can also mean small or describe a relatively small amount like two small fish as opposed to one big fish, for example. And they don't even appear to count without their language on their fingers too. Many people, including Daniel, have tried to teach them to count but they just don't want to learn that. They have also no words for colors even though they see color like we all do. For them, red is just like blood. Unlike other hunter-gatherer tribes of Amazon, the Pidaha have resisted efforts by missionaries and government agencies to teach them farming. Even when other tribes of Amazon has adopted outside cultures, the Pidaha continues to shun any outside influences and live a happy, contented life. So does that mean these people are stupid? Not at all, says David. On the contrary, the Pidaha are supremely gifted in all the ways necessary to ensure their continued survival in the jungle. They know the usefulness and location of all important plants in their area. They understand the behavior of local animals and how to catch and avoid them. And they can walk into the jungle naked with no tools or weapons and walk out three days later with baskets of fruit, nuts and small game. They have the intelligence of a normal college-going student, claims Daniel. There is a brilliant documentary on the life of Pidahas and Daniel Everett called The Grammar of Happiness, which is a must-watch and I will put the link to it in the description section. Daniel Everett has not been able to visit his beloved Pidahas since 2007 due to restrictions imposed by local authorities. But he still misses them. And they must be missing their friend who brought out the fascinating characteristics of their life and language to the rest of the world. Pidahas are a typical example that one can be good without a god and that your life could be contented and happy without a judge in the clouds. So why did I do this video? For two reasons. One to show the world that there are people who live happy and contented without naturally believing in a superpower and two to introduce and invite you to the world's biggest atheist meet that is going to be held at Kochi on the 2nd of October. This is organized by Essence Global and it is their annual event called Litmus. It has been quite popular and successful when it was conducted in previous years and this year there is an illustrious array of speakers who are lined up to speak at the event. The topics are going to be on science and atheism. Yes, there is a growing number of godless tribes whose language consists of words like humanism, rationality and skepticism and they are working hard towards promoting scientific temper. So please treat this as a personal invitation to book your tickets today to Kochi to attend the world's biggest atheist meet in God's own country. Pun intended. That's it for today folks. I hope you liked today's episode and I will see you in another one soon. Until then, it's bye bye from Paid Blue Thoughts.